Oh, yeah, I don't like where this is going. That's a volcanic offering. Uh... Today on Commander Replay, Boros Month continues. Can our opponents survive a Jorkadine the Prevailer with Metalcraft? Find out next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, there's two great ways to support the channel. All links are in the description below. So here's the rundown on Boros Month. We'll be playing mostly Boros decks, but a few non-Boros decks mixed in. The goal is to play every commander with 11 remaining and to test them for power level, which means no jank builds. And finally, I won't be using any combos unless it's a combo specific to that commander. Welcome back everyone, Boros Month continues. And today we're playing Jorkadine the Prevailer. Let's take a look at this opener. We've got two lands and an Arcade Signet. Uh, we got a Wheel of Fortune if we get into trouble. Uh, I think that's fine. We'll keep. Oh god, what? Ugh. Got an Adriana at the table. That's always fun. Love me some Adriana. I was thinking about playing her earlier today. I wanted to do an update on Night Tribal. Uh, Champ says it's Spirit Tribal, Adriana. That should be fun. Uh, I am pretty nervous about this uh, Jenga Taxis, though. Once that's in play, it's going to be hard to do stuff. But hopefully by the time that happens, that like either Champ or I will have a board state and, uh, you know, might just be able to attack them out of the game. So as of the filming of this video, there are 11 Boros Commanders remaining for Boros Month. Uh, this is the second one that I'm filming. Again, I have no idea what order I'm going to release these in. Oh, that's Feast and Famine. Those are pretty good. Would love to not have to wheel that, but um, we'll see. We'll see. Arcane Signet for opponent. Boros Signet for champ. Uh, there's a Burnished Heart. Oh, God, this is all so awkward. Um, play the Arcane Signet. I really hope the next one's a land. <laughs> Uh, I think we have to play the burn shard either way, though, even if it's not. Because that can get us going. I mean, that can kind of make up for the turn that we're probably going to lose. Ethereum Sculptor. Yeah, they're starting to get close now. Wait, uh, actually, no, that doesn't help Jinga Taxis at all. Jinga Taxis is not an artifact. There's a Moon Silver Key. But this is probably going to get, like, a Soul Ring or something, and that will probably help them. Probably need to run this card a little bit more than I do. Gets a Replicating Ring. That's fun. Dihada's Ploy. Haven't seen this one. Draw two cards and discard a card. You gain life equal to the number of cards you've discarded this turn. Jumpstart. Interesting. Amaria coming in for champ. Watch out for that late in the game. And a mirror entity. Nice. Ugh, smothering tithe. Yeah, this, uh, this would all be so much better if we just drew another land. Here comes the replicating ring. Yep. And the helm of cauldra. Yeah, that's a good card. I assume there's two more pieces coming. <laughs> it's got first strike, haste, and trample. I guess nothing else to do with the mana. I'll tell you what, the keywords on that thing, pretty good. You can get a lot done with First Strike, Trample, and Haste. Is that the same keywords as, uh, is it Chariot or uh, Haunted Cloak? I can't remember which one does what. One of them has Vigilance and one doesn't. Dihada's Ploy, jump-started, it's coming back. KO discards the Tendrils of Agony. Oh, God, he's playing Storm. Draw a new Storm. Oh, funny story, we have a uh, Smothering Tithe Wheel in hand. Uh, we're not supposed to do that in this series. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So part of the point of this series is that I want to get a look at the commander and like if we go smothering tithe wheel and it sticks, then that will just win the game. Oh yeah, I don't like where this is going. That's a volcanic offering. Uh, I mean, I guess we're gonna choose the same land because blowing up two lands this early doesn't seem great. Yeah, burn a chart's gonna go down. This is probably gonna be very painful for us. So that being the case, I might just wheel. There's the land. Uh, well, in that case, smothering tithe, I guess. Oh, wait, Burnished Heart survived. How about that? Yeah, still the Smothering Tithe. Oop, could have attacked. Meant to do that. Replicating Ring. Smothering Tithe. The dream would be if we catch three treasures and can crack this before our turn comes back. That would be sweet. Uh, there's the Jenga Taxis. What does this thing counter? Counters artifacts, instants, and sorceries. Ugh. This is an artifact, so that'll get countered. That might be counter fodder when we get to that point. This is a creature which we can get through, which is nice. Treasure number two. Patriarch Seal gets countered straight to the graveyard. Yep, there's a, there is a Jinga Taxis in play. God, this thing's nasty. Whenever you cast an artifact, instant or sorcery, copy it, choose new targets. Whenever an opponent casts an artifact, instant or sorcery, counter the first one each turn. That's ridiculous. Uh, Smothering Tithe, let's see what... Oop, yep, champ doesn't pay. Fantastic. Uh, Hoffrey, let us crack this Burnished Heart. Actually, I mean, we should probably wait till after combat, but it's just trying to F6. We'll get one of each. Actually, no, we have two... Yeah, we have no mountains in play, so let's get two mountains. Oh, never mind, we did have one mountain. Secure the Wastes is a cool late-game card. Um, let's get this Goldspan Dragon in. This thing have flying? No flying. Cool. Swing that into Kithron. Make a treasure. 
it can sacrifice for double. So obviously the plan with this is that once your commander is in play, at an end step, you just pump a ton of mana into this, and then they all... Then you get a bunch of really huge creatures. And, uh, in theory, should be able to kill a player or two with that. Smothering Tithe. Should take a read of our commander, by the way. It's Jorkadine the Prevailer. Out of, what is that? Is that New Phyrexia? Five mana for a 5-4 with First Strike. Metalcraft. Creatures you control get plus three, plus zero, as long as you control three or more artifacts. I think it's actually pretty cool. There aren't, like, a ton of things that pump power that much in the game. Especially for your entire team. And especially, you know, five mana is very affordable for that effect. When you consider that, like, Dictate of Heliod is five mana for plus two, plus two. Uh, three O is just, it changes combat math a lot. And if you can get a couple keywords attached to things, too, that's really going to make a big difference. So, I don't know, it's one that I've always wanted to play and just uh, never really got around to, so finally doing that today. I will say that the 99 for this deck, it's not exactly everything that I wanted. Uh, the original plan that I had was to make a double strike tribal deck where you run basically every three drop printed in red white that's had double strike and there's a lot of them uh, a bunch of two mana also then just cast jorkadine because then you have a bunch of like four fours and five five double strikers which is really cool or like five two double strikers rather that's a lot of damage off of not a lot of cmc which seems cool to me but that one was going to take a little while to get right because i needed to get the balance of like artifacts to non-artifacts right as i started building the deck i'm like oh this artifact count's getting kind of low uh, a little nervous about that that's a mage bane armor uh, immediately countered. Uh, yeah, I think KO is just kind of throwing in the towel here. Opponent did swing into us for five. Got us for five commander with the Jinka Texas. Uh, we have a bunch of treasures that tap for double, so, like, we can cast Jorkadine this... Haunted Library, what's this do? Okay. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you may pay one if you do make a spirit. That's fine. Yeah, with, uh, with this much, like, double tapping treasure mana, Jorkadine this turn, and then secure the wastes on the end step? Seems like a play. Oh, wait. Oh, nope. Uh, Jorkid, the, the thingy's still in play. So, we would need another instant to be able to do that, which would then get countered. Uh, that's a planes. Planes are decent. Play the planes. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, cast our commander. We've got a 7-4. Oh, we can cast... No, that, that'll, that'll get countered if we cast it. We could cast the Brea's Apprentice first and then do it. Uh, we'll wait... Mm, I mean, I guess we already, I already pressed the button, so... Swing into Kithron. 7-4 in the air. Make a treasure. It hits. He goes down to 25. And we've got an 8-4 first striker. Yeah, that is pretty cool that, like, it makes itself an 8-4 first strike when you have Metalcraft. Love that. So many Lord-type cards in the game don't pump themselves up, and this one does, which is great. <laughs> K.O. says, I feel like Rodney Dangerfield. This is rough, I tell you. Rough. <laughs> he gets no respect. <laughs> Uh, that's a Dark Steel Forge. Artifacts have Indestructible. That's two Dark Steel Forges. 5-5, five, five, over to Champ. Patriarch Seal is one that I want to try also. I didn't realize it's on Magic Online. Uh, looks really good for Tap Creature Tribal. And probably some other things. Like, you could probably just jam that into, like, random Voltron decks and stuff and use it as pseudo vigilance. Uh, Primal Amulet into the counters. Okay, opponent's confirming that if we cast a thing right now, uh, it should be fine. We'll go to the end step first. Uh, and then we're going to pump a ton of mana into the Secure the Wastes. X-15 into the Secure the Wastes. I mean, even if Jorkadine gets shot or something, that's still a lot of tokens. Uh, no, we did not get countered. Love it. Oh, I used all my treasures, though. We got to get more treasures. Crap. <laughs> How many artifacts are we on? We uh, have one right now. Yeah, he's paying. No metal craft for us. Uh, Arcane Signet into the counterspell. Does he have a board wipe? No, he has an Odric. Uh, decent. Trample and haste. Man, we might have to counter the Feast and Famine to get Metalcraft back online. Does it ignite the future? Maybe not. Oh, yeah, still got the counterspell thing to deal with, though. Oh, when we attack with gold, Goldspan will make a treasure, so we just need one artifact in play. But one additional artifact. We have seven mana. Yeah, I guess that means cast this thing. Watch it get countered. Cast this Feast and Famine, which we cannot afford to equip. Then go to combat. Odric trigger. Uh, it's like seven. That's eight. That's fifteen. These will all be fours. Nineteen, twenty-four, thirty something, and one more for good measure. Uh, rest of these into KO. Gold span dragon. Metalcraft. KO survives at three. Kithron goes down. Uh, we'll pass like that. Soul ring in for KO. That's a balefire liege. That's a good spirit. 
Everything into our face, yep. You know, if he had lifelink, this could be kind of interesting. He does not, sadly. Down to 19. Uh, and then scoops. Into Kale. Gold's Pandragon. Oh my god, Kale's got an Aetherize. All right, starting over. Recast our commander. Uh, cast Goldspan Dragon. Cast this Tithe. I'm gonna leave a mana floating, I think, but it's okay. I'll get get a Sacred Foundry, play a Sacred Foundry, equip a sword to the thing. Oh, nope, not floating. Uh, pass like that. Uh, Beacon of Unrest getting the Apprentice. That's two blockers. KO putting up the fight. See if we can't find something that helps us here. Uh, Enlightened Tutor is a card that can help. Cast an Enlightened Tutor. We just need some sort of evasion. <laughs> How much mana do we have? Really want to put Helm of the Host on Jorkadine. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, we're one short. We're one short. Uh, we get ooh, we could get our type of aggression. I don't think we actually should have that much mana. So you know what? I'm just gonna do the Helm of the Host thing because I kind of wanted to do that. It'd be funny to have multiple uh, Helm of the Hosts. Uh, we'll cast the Ignite the Future, and then it's all sitting there ready and waiting for us, which I like. Uh, played the Ancient Den. Oh, we could cast a Dismantling Wave, couldn't we? Yeah, whatever. We'll uh, we'll wait the next turn to Helm of the Host. Eh, I probably should have attacked with the Dragon. Get the treasure. Whoops. Yeah, that's fine. I'm leaving it in Exile just so it doesn't get, like, shot. I mean, I guess he's in Demir, so... It is unlikely that it would get shot, but... Draw new into play. Uh, back to our turn. There's a Mountain. Play a Mountain. Play the Helm of the Host. Equip the Helm of the Host. Oh, really? He got more interaction. Yep. Uh, he's gonna phase out our commander. So I guess that means we Helm of the Host on our dragon? Well, that's disappointing. It's gonna try to make them all huge. Uh, equip on the dragon. Make a dragon. Send in both dragons. Make two treasures. And down he goes. So, a couple things this game. Smothering Tithe was obviously huge for us. Just always ridiculous. Even more so when you have the dragon and they're all making double. But the Jinkataxis really messed a lot of people up. That Volcanic Offering also basically took KO out of the game. Uh, and that's actually a reason I don't run Volcanic Offering all the time anymore, because early in a game like that, yeah, you can just take someone out of the game. Now, if they're the type of deck that needs to be taken out of the game, that's fine. But KO probably didn't need to give a land blown up right there, so... Anyway, yeah, Jorkadine, it's about as powerful as I thought. Obviously not the best example with the Smothering Tithe. A non-Smothering Tithe game will probably be a touch slower than this, but but it still felt decent being in play. Uh, like, you feel the impact of your creatures being very large. I think I'm actually going to add... Uh, what's the cat one? The White Sun Zenith. Add that in here just as a nice other finisher. Secure the Waste was really good for us, so, you know, expect the same sort of thing out of... Uh, white sun but anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video as always feel free to comment like or subscribe thank you for watching i want to thank my awesome patreon supporters you guys are awesome if you want to help support the channel vote on which decks i play next or if you want to get some good games of spell table be sure to check out my patreon at the link below